is the hot zone. Engaging with the news in a whole new way, international war correspondent Chuck Holton brings insight into areas of crisis and lets you help those affected. Hey folks, it's Chuck Holton here. Thanks for watching The Hot Zone. Uh, it's been a kind of sparse couple of weeks because I have been just absolutely slammed, starting with my son getting married here at, at our farm in West Virginia. And so I uh, undertook to restain the entire house, which turned out as always to be quite a bit more work than it than, than I thought it would be. <laughs> uh, that's par for the course. Uh, and I'm just now finishing that up. Actually, I just put the finishing touches on the last bit of stain just five minutes ago. And I'm very happy to be done with that. Let me tell you, hopefully I'll not have to do that again for many years. And uh, so then I went to Alaska in there. We had a 10 day trip to Alaska. And for part of that trip, I was so far out in the bush that uh, we didn't have any connection, we didn't have any internet or anything. Uh, but I got some really cool stories out of that that I will be sharing with you uh, before too long. Today, I want to talk about China and specifically their plans to take over the world. This is something China's been doing for many years. And it's interesting to see the ways that they are modeling their culture in order to make them uh, stronger on the national on, on the international stage. Uh, so first of all, let's talk about the Belt and Road Project. So they've started this Belt and Road Initiative where they have invested in infrastructure projects around the world, uh, often donating these multi-billion dollar bridges and train systems and roads and things like that uh, in order to uh, sort of curry favor with uh, countries around the world. We saw this with Venezuela uh, when they had a lot of oil, they would give oil at cut rates to their neighbors, to other countries to try to curry favor with those countries and make them beholden to Venezuela. That's exactly what China is doing. They're looking to make the whole world beholden to them. And they're using these projects to do it. Uh, it's also an economic boost for their country because guess who's building all these projects? It's, it's Chinese companies. Uh, it also gives them more uh, inroads, more ways that they can uh, do espionage uh, on everything from companies and whole industries to uh, cultural espionage, social espionage, to military espionage, you name it. They are full court press around the world trying to steal everything they can uh, in order to get ahead and become the world's preeminent superpower. And they are probably closer to that than many people understand. So uh, there's a couple of things that I've seen lately that I found very interesting. See, we used to say when I was in the military that uh, you need to be serious about training because somewhere out there in a cave in, in Afghanistan or someplace, there are uh, men training to kill you. They are going without food. They're going without sleep. They sleep on the ground. They're away from their families for long periods of time. They are inured to hardship and they can survive on almost nothing. And so if we get too comfortable as soldiers, then we're going to lose when we go up against those guys. So we need to keep in the back of our minds that there are people out there that are training to kill us at all times. And um, that certainly is the case with China. They are training to beat our country into submission. And they are bringing to bear every tool that they have at their disposal to do that. One of the tools that China has that the United States does not is the ability to just by decree change the behavior of their people. Now, we're seeing more and more of that in the United States, but that's a different subject for a different day. Uh, but suffice it to say that China is looking at how they can make their men more able to be good soldiers. And in so doing, they're recognizing that uh, the typical behaviors of teenage boys uh, in modern society are not conducive to making good troops. Uh, we've seen that in the United States where 78% uh, of young people today could not pass the physical to get into the US military. And it's not that hard. And six out of 10 uh, American teenagers can't pass the ASVAB test 
the, the aptitude test to get into the military today. And you only have to have a 30% on that test to pass. Uh, it's, it's absolutely mind boggling. When my son Mason joined the military, he went to the, the what they call the Military Entrance Processing Center, the MEPS station. Uh, and the first thing they do is they give you the ASVAB test. There were 40 people there and 30 people failed. Uh, of the 10 people that were left, six out of 10 failed the physical that day. So only four out of 40 actually qualified even at a minimum to be a clerk, a cook, a truck driver, any, just the most simple job in the US military. It's absolutely mind boggling. They've had to increase the number of weeks of basic training in the military because they have so many kids coming in that do pass the physical, but they are, they've never been exposed to hardship and their bones are brittle because of that. And so they get stress fractures in their hips and in their shins, in their legs and in their feet. And they have to, they had to increase the length of basic training in order to toughen these kids up because they've lived their whole lives on the Cheeto diet. It's absolutely a travesty, not to mention the fact that our US military is more focused on rooting out conservatives within their ranks or uh, pushing the woke agenda and making sure that trans people and lesbians feel welcome in, in the Navy SEALs and stuff. Um, that is not a recipe for a world superpowers military. It's just not. We've seen that our US uh, Navy is uh, really unable to qualify in many cases the, to, to drive their boats around the ocean. They crash into things all the time. They're, they've had a tremendous amount of uh, just accidents due to incompetence in the U.S. military, too many to count uh, over the last several, uh, several years. So it's a real problem. It's a real problem. And now what's China doing? Well, they are, uh, I'm going to just show you some, some uh, stories here on my screen. Uh, they, they've just now banned kids from playing online video games during the week. Why is that? Well, China needs kids to be outside doing active things and the, they realize that playing video games is not only not healthy, but it's actually detrimental to their national security. Uh, so they, they and, and they can do this, they can just ban kids from playing online video games during the week. Uh, we can't do that in the United States, but it certainly wouldn't be a bad idea to, for you as a parent to keep your kids from playing video games during the week, at the very least, make them go outside and find an acre they haven't seen yet. Uh, make them uh, get, make it so bored in your house that they just have to go outside to find something to do. That's a, a really good way to raise your children, but letting them be pacified by screens, treating your kids like poodles is not going to uh, redound to the benefit of the United States of America, of our national security, or of your family. Not only that, one of the big reasons that China is making these uh, new laws, uh, here's another one. Uh, this is from, no, that's not it. Uh, let's see here, where'd it go? Oh. China bans effeminate men from TV as part of a cultural crackdown. They, they banned uh, the depiction of homosexual uh, acts and stuff on, on Chinese television years ago, but now they've banned even the, the showing of effeminate men so basically, they're, they're trying to turn their boys into little Rambos. And in the United States here, we're trying to turn our boys into uh, unbelievably obese little snowflakes. And that, that equation does not work out well in the United States' favor. It's a big problem. Uh, now, obviously, it, you know, it, should the government of the United States ban video games? No, we can't do that. This is the United States of America. Freedom is one of our biggest strengths. Now, the, the Chinese government is making use of the fact that they can mandate those things. And think about this. One of the other reasons that they're doing it is not just so that their guys will be more uh, physically fit and ready to go to war, but they also have a big problem with breeding. Look at Japan. In Japan, 69% of marriage age men, this is men 18 and over, uh, have no romantic partner. 69%, almost 70% of men have no romantic partner. And 70% of those guys don't want one. 
they say, oh, it's just too much trouble. I've got online porn. I've got my video games. I'm happy. They don't want the, the responsibility of a family. And China is heading the same way. You look at, at, at South Korea, South Korea, the men are very effeminate. In their culture, it's not uncommon to see men uh, wearing pink Hello Kitty t-shirts and uh, dyeing their hair and painting their fingernails and stuff like that. And I think this law in China is aimed specifically at K-pop, the, the law against showing effeminate men on television. K-pop is a massively popular uh, boy bands uh, that are kind of androgynous, really smooth skinned and real pretty uh, boys. And uh, China doesn't want that for their boys because they realize that we need our boys to breed and have lots of babies. They've realized that that one child policy that China in, embarked on for many, many years uh, was a very disastrous thing. As a matter of fact, if you look at the numbers, if you look at the replacement rate uh, the, the birth rate in China, it's very likely if they don't get on the ball that that whole, I mean, within a hundred years or, or so, that China could die off. They could literally not have anybody left in China. And, uh, China, and Japan is looking at the same problem. Uh, that, that country within a decade might be staffed completely by robots at this point because nobody is breeding. We're seeing the same thing here in the United States on a, on a little bit uh, lesser level, but uh, boys in the United States are having sex later. They're, they're really, they're, this, this is the, the, the crazy irony here. They're watching porn earlier, but engaging in sex later. And the, the number of people that are actually getting married and staying married and having children after marriage is declining precipitously in the United States. We are right on the cusp of replacement uh, birth rate of like 1.3 for every every person. And if it goes any lower, we will see our population start to decline. So China wants to take over the world. They realize that a declining population, an aging population is not the way to do that. And they want their guys to get busy, to get out there and do productive things with their lives and have babies. And so they're passing laws to uh, force their sons and uh, to, to do that. Uh, we can't pass laws like that here in the United States, but that doesn't mean it's not a good idea. So uh, that's uh, obviously, uh, if you've read any of my most recent books, Prowess, my most recent one, and Making Men, the one before that, uh, I have a real heart for young men here in the United States. And so we're actually looking into starting a, a boys camp here on our farm in West Virginia, where we can teach boys manly skills, wilderness survival, land navigation, hand-to-hand -hand combat, shooting, uh, maybe even parachuting, I don't know. Uh, but we're, we're working together with some other organizations, some other nonprofits to try to raise some money so that we can uh, help boys become men here in the United States of America. Can't have enough good men and we need more of those. So get busy with your own sons. Uh, go ahead and get my books. If you it, it, just go look them up, uh, Making Men and Prowess. Uh, that would be very good for your sons. And uh, thanks for watching. I'm Chuck Holton, and this is The Hot Zone. The Hot Zone is produced by Amy Holton and Live Fire Media. Copyright 2021.